Hey, good morning, everybody. How are you today? It is Monday, and that means we're ready for another dose of mojo. I'm Anna Gibbs, and I'm so happy you're here. Thank you for joining me. And um, we're going to talk today about confidence, and I'm really excited about that because I think confidence is your gateway to a lot of opportunity. So if you're joining us for the first time, um, this is our weekly session on Monday mornings to get the week started off right and for us to really get into a good mindset that helps us move forward into growth into opportunity, helps us to leave behind some of the limiting beliefs that hold us back, gives us a new perspective, maybe teaches us some new things. And I'm excited to be your coach every week for it. So thanks again. And we also have our Facebook group. And so good morning to all of you who are watching live on our Facebook group, Monday Morning Mojo with Anna Gibbs. Uh, it is always a pleasure. Let me know if you're here. Give me a little shout out. Hi, good morning. I see you. Good morning. And um, we're going to dive in this morning and uh, we're going to talk about confidence and why it's so important and how we can develop our confidence through some, you know, daily habits. Hi, Linda. Good morning. Thanks for joining me. So confidence, I believe, helps us feel ready for life's experiences. So if you're taking any notes, jot that down. Confidence helps us feel ready for life's experiences because when we're confident. Hey. Good morning. I'm going to just ask if you can mute yourselves, but it's so, so good to be here. Good morning. Hi. So confidence, Jill, so good to see you here on Zoom. we got a few more people coming into the Zoom room here. So confidence gives you the ability to prepare for anything that may come at you through the day. So that is why developing our self-confidence is so important, because when we feel confident, we can move forward with people, we can move forward with opportunities and not back away from them, right? And if things don't work out at first, I think our confidence can give us the power to try again, right? So when our confidence is low, all the opposite things become true. So that's why I think self-confidence is probably even more important than we think, right? Because the more confident you are, the more ability you have to calm that little voice in your head that starts telling you all the things that are not possible, right? So we want to unhook our thoughts from that and we want to really attach it to the power that we have, our inner ability to figure things out, our inner ability to uh, master uh, whatever it is we need to learn, our inner ability to muster up our motivation, uh, to be able to move forward, right? So I think the more confident we are, the higher our vibration, right? And you know, I talk about this a lot on Mojo, everything is energy and energy is everything. So when you uh, really have that core inner belief, when you have that, that positive self-image, when you have that confidence, people see it. They, you don't have to even say a word and they just know, right? So it's about that vibration that creates sort of a ripple effect or a magnetic force. And I think that people are attracted to that. People want to work with confident people, right? Because it, if they believe in you, right? If they believe in you, then you have the ability to create possibilities with them, right? If they don't have any question that you have the ability, the confidence, the belief in what you do, then they won't question it either. So that's what some things about why confidence is so important. So how do we develop more of our own confidence? I've come up with about eight different habits that I want to share with you this morning. So again, maybe you want to take some notes. Uh, this recording will uh, show up again on our Facebook page, so you can always review it. And you can always find all of the Mojo uh, recordings on my YouTube channel too. So the first habit of confident people the first habit of confident people, number one, they start the day for themselves and no one else. <laughs> now, what do I mean by that? Okay. I mean that they focus probably at least the first hour of their day on themselves, on reading, on meditating, on prayer, 
on exercise, on hydration, on just understanding what they need to start the day in their most positive way. So I want you to think about that right now. How do you start your day? That is one of the reasons why I started this whole series on a Monday morning, as early in the morning as I could, and to give you all the opportunity to have a, a mindset fix on something that is more positive, on something that is more about um, the right habits, and to give you a perspective of empowerment for the day. So if you back it up and think about how, how do you start your day when you first get up? And I realized that, you know, especially on a Monday morning, some of us may choose to have a manic Monday. And I use that word choose intentionally because you could choose to start your day in a different manner if necessary. If you could choose to start your day earlier, for instance, maybe even just 30 minutes earlier, what would you incorporate in a morning routine? So individuals who have a lot of confidence, they know that they start that, that process the first thing in the morning, because when you start your day for yourself, you are really fueling up, you are really charging the battery, right? And so um, for me, this began many years ago. Uh, I have three children. I've always been a working mom. I've always had a pretty demanding career, a uh, high profile career. And I also love my family dearly. And, and I needed to learn how to balance those two things. So for me, it started, you know, getting up early. I think part of that might be in my DNA. My grandmother and my mother are early risers too. Yet I was really intentional and still am today about that. I love I love having that hour, sometimes two hours to myself before anybody gets up. And it's my time. It's my time to read. It's my time to pray and meditate. It's my time to reflect. It might be my time. Um, I choose not to do a lot of work during that time because uh, not, not work as it relates to my career and my job right now, but I might work on me. I might do um, some journaling. I might do some exercises based on something I read or, or my own, uh, like um, I'm in, I have registered for a master class right now. So I might do something like that, but it's my time and it's my time to really start the day in a positive way. So that's something that all uh, people who I think are vibrating on a high level would probably tell you they have in common. They don't even realize it, but it's, it's the ability to take control of their day right from the beginning. The second habit of a confident person is they have the ability to say no. <laughs> they know, they understand that no is a complete sentence. A confident person is someone who is not afraid to be, to be focused on what they need and what their boundaries are. Now, this is not about being selfish. This is about being centered on what is right for self. OK, you've heard the saying before that when you're faced with an emergency, you put your oxygen mask on first, because if you don't, you won't be able to help the person next to you. That is so true for how we should really journey through life. And I think for a lot of you beautiful souls out there, you are giving away your oxygen all day long. And if you were to put your needs first and really get clear about your boundaries. Who am I talking to out there? Is anybody saying, oh my gosh, I needed to hear this today? If you get clear about your boundaries and you get comfortable saying no, I see you. If you get comfortable in saying no, you protect your time, you protect your energy, you protect your sanity. I am not encouraging you to be less helpful to people, but I am asking you to take some inventory around how easily you give away your power, how easily you give up your time, how easily you allow the energy vampires in, how easily you say yes to things, because as soon as you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. So it's about having the confidence to say, I really appreciate you asking me to be a part of that. And I have to say no. 
It's that easy. Thank you for thinking of me. And I have to say no. Now, it's also about discernment and knowing the things that we probably can't say no to, right? So if your boss comes in and says, I have this project and I need you to start working on it, your priorities might be shifting. And I get that. But there is a lot of other things that are happening throughout your day. And it could be in the workplace. It could be outside of the workplace, in your friendships, in your family, in your other relationships where the boundaries are not there. And so again, if you wanna really develop your own confidence, this habit could be one way to do that. Learning when and how to say no and not having to feel bad about it and not giving up a lot of yourself in the process, right? Just knowing where your limits are. Basically showing people how to treat you, showing people how to treat you, okay? All right, here's the third habit that I have for you this morning. These are habits of confident people. They work on themselves every day. They work on themselves every day. That means that they're taking time, dedicated time, intentional time for personal growth and development. And, you know, the thing about growth is that I think a lot of us believe that growth happens all on its own. And it does to a degree, but it's incremental growth, right? If you really want to see accelerated growth in your career, in your skills, in your mindset, in your physical capabilities, in your relationships, you have to be intentional about it. So where do you put time on your calendar for growth? Do you have time set aside, even just 30 minutes a day, to read, to listen to podcasts, to develop a skill that you know will help you master what you do in your career? Um, do you have time on your calendar for exercise? Do you have time to develop yourself you know, personally? Because when you work on yourself every day, that's where you create this exponential factor that can help you attract more opportunities, help you do what you're doing faster and easier, help you become more valuable to an organization, therefore increase your, your financial perspective. <clears throat> your greatest asset is you. So if you want your assets to grow, you need to do things to help your assets grow. So confident people know, or I would say this, the confidence is derived from the personal growth, right? So maybe these are habits of confident people. Maybe these are ways that people develop their confidence, right? I think it works in both, both directions. So the more time that you spend on growing you, you open yourself up to great possibilities and opportunities. So personal growth needs to be intentional. It needs to show up on your calendar. That can raise your confidence by leaps and bounds. Number four, again, confidence, what comes first, right? These habits or confidence, or are they working together? Uh, so number four is that they listen to their intuition. They listen to their intuition. The more you trust to trust that little voice and the more that you listen to your intuition, the more confident you will be. And, and as you develop your confidence, you are trusting that even more, right? Because you are self-assured, you are self-assured and you are self-reliant. And so we confident people know that that inner voice is guiding them, right? So our intuition is powerful. I just did an entire mojo on intuition maybe two weeks ago. So um, you can go back and check that out. But you're, you're that little voice, right? Listen to it. It's guiding you. Now, your intuition is, is as, as I just said, an inner GPS. It's, it's based on a lot of your previous experiences. It's based on your successes and your failures, right? Because we're learning from everything. Uh, you derive your intuition from all the things that you've experienced in your life. It all starts speaking to you. And sometimes it can even show up in your body first, right? So, you know, you get that little spidey sense, that sixth sense when you're in a situation uh, and it might show up in your body first. It could be a flutter in your stomach. It could be sweaty hands. It could be a, a headache. Uh, it could be a feeling of anxiety. It could be a feeling of excitement, right? So it's it's giving you a clue 
as to what to to assess in this situation, right? So when you feel that that an opportunity coming your way is is really exciting and a good one, don't be afraid to pursue it. Don't be afraid to ask more questions. But when something comes up and you feel like, oh, this doesn't feel right, um, you should listen. Because I think when we look back in hindsight, anytime we didn't follow our intuition, uh, we learned that there's another reason why we should have listened to our intuition. <laughs> so that inner voice or GPS is really powerful and that can do a lot to develop your confidence. What are some other habits of confident people? They, number five, they're okay asking for help. They are okay asking for help. See, asking for help is not a sign of weakness. I believe asking for help is a sign of strength. And I think that as you develop more of your self-confidence, you will not judge yourself for saying, I have a question. You will judge yourself less for saying, I'm not sure I have all the information here. Do you think you could help me? You will feel more comfortable raising your hand saying, can you explain that to me? Confident people understand that, or successful people understand that they may not always have all the answers. You don't always have to have the answers, my friends, but can you be confident enough to ask more questions so you can learn the answer? That's a sign of strength. When you're willing to say, what else do I need to know here? When you're willing to look something up, when you're willing to ask questions, when you're willing to acknowledge in a meeting, I'm not sure I understand. That's a sign of strength. Because when you don't do those things and you try to force yourself through or muddle through, you easily could become overwhelmed. You could uh, miss the mark. You could feel a lot of stress and anxiety because it feels like you, you're under pressure and maybe failing, right? So let's get comfortable asking for more details. Let's get comfortable asking for more information. And let's get comfortable asking to learn from each other. If we could take the time to ask for help and learn from each other, we, we could really double our tools in our toolbox or sharpen our tools in our toolbox. And that in, in itself will make us more valuable, right? So increasing our confidence means that we're also gonna get more comfortable with asking for help. I Let me know if this is resonating with you. Are these some good things this morning? Who needed to hear this? All right, number six, confident people. Good, I'm so glad. Uh, confident people prioritize feeling good about themselves. Let's face it, guys, if you're confident, you should feel good about yourself, right? We should get comfortable. Again, I'm talking about being comfortable with self-promotion, with uh, self-love, with self-image, with self-confidence, right? All the things that start with self. Let's prioritize feeling good about ourselves. Let's prioritize how we spend time doing the things that we love. How do we prioritize and feel good about learning new skills, about coming out of our comfort zone, about stretching ourselves, right? How do we put self-care at the top of the list? And my love, self-care is so much more than a bubble bath. Self-care is not just a day at the spa. Self-care is a lot of stuff we've talked about here and even this morning, like saying no, that's a form of self-care. Protecting the time you have on your calendar to do the things that are important, that are in your priorities. That's an act of self-care, right? By, by maintaining your values and living in alignment with your values, that's self-care. So when we prioritize feeling good about ourselves, it just means that we're okay with putting self in front of a lot of these terms, right? Because so many of you are so good at putting other people in front of care, in front of image, in front of help, instead of putting self there first. And if you put self there first and you raise your confidence level, you are better equipped, you are empowered to be of value to more people. So for all of you who are listening to this and saying, well, I know that I really love helping other people and I love being um, a part of a team and contributing. I love that about you. 
And I'm going to tell you, you can do that at a higher level when you protect yourself and your time and, and put your, your needs first, the oxygen mask first, and raise all of these vibrational levels and increase your confidence, you will help more people. Because what I said in the beginning of this um, session is you vibrate at a high level, people see it, they feel it, they're attracted by it. So if you want to help more people, work on yourself first. If you want to be a better leader, learn how to lead yourself first. If you want to teach other people, learn as much as you can about yourself first. Put your own personal growth and development on your calendar first. I'm not saying only, I'm just saying first. Don't be afraid to claim that you need to be at the top of the list. Because the next habit I want to share with you is this one. Confident people accept themselves. They accept themselves for who they are and who they're, they're not. They understand their strengths and they understand their weaknesses. And your confidence will grow when you put more energy into mastering your strengths and just leveraging your weaknesses. I've seen a lot of people torture themselves by thinking that they have to overcome a weakness and they have to learn something that is just really not in their wheelhouse to prove to themselves that they can, when really if they could just shift their energy and focus on what they're already good at and multiply that and magnify that, they become masterful. They become uh, someone that people need because of that strength rather than spending all this time over here. So it's, it's about accepting who you are and who you're not, loving yourself for who you are, all the things that make you who you uniquely are, all of the wonderful things, all the messy things, but they accept themselves and they're not putting pressure on themselves. They're not judging themselves. They're not um, basically telling themselves they're not good enough. They accept all those things about who they are and use those strengths to their advantage. And lastly, number eight, the confident people are willing to talk about their success and their failures. They are willing to share the entire messy road of how they got wherever they are today. And, you know, a lot of times I know we can see success and we can, um, in our own minds, decide what success looks like or make some determination about how that person succeeded. Or oftentimes we get so focused on just the end result. We get so focused on seeing them, you know, as who they are today. And we don't stop to think about the road they had to take to get there, right? Like who were they when they started the journey? Because who I was when I started my career is nothing like I am today. I'm way more confident today than I was 10 years ago or 20 years ago. And I believe I'm probably less confident today than I'll be in five years from now, right? Because I will always focus on my growth. And so we are, we have to be willing and comfortable to talk about our successes and share those journeys, uh, share those lessons, share our experiences with other people. Because if I can help you succeed in business and in life, uh, by by sharing anything that I've done, I, I want to do that for you. I want to I want to shorten the learning curve for you. Um, I want to you know share also my pain points. I want to share where I failed with you because that will give you the ability maybe to avoid the pitfall in a way that I couldn't avoid, right? But it also gives you the feeling that I'm as human as you are right? Because we're all doing this as human beings and human beings are not perfect. And so we can't expect the journey to success, whatever that is, to be perfect. So confident people are not afraid to be vulnerable. And confident people build their confidence through their vulnerability because we are open and willing to share all the good, the bad, and the ugly, all the beauty, all the pain and all the messy in between. And through all of that, we keep learning every time we share it. And then whoever we're sharing it with, hopefully will learn too. So if we could just find a way to connect more, if we could find a way to share all our stories, um, there, are, there are amazing people around us. There's amazing talent around us. There are people who are really smart business people uh, in different areas, it could be leadership, finances, strategy, 
um, uh, recruiting, selling, marketing, right? But then there are creative people who know how to paint, who know how to sing, who play an instrument, crochet. Uh, there are people who scale mountains and run marathons. And I mean, we're just amazing human beings. And if we take the time to ask questions of each other and share information with each other, and if we're willing to share the wins as much as we are willing to share, if we're willing to share the, the, the losses as much as we're willing to share the wins, you know, we can learn from all of that. And I just think that's powerful. And the more we do that and the more comfortable we get with that vulnerability, I believe that we raise our, our vibration and raise our confidence. So those are my eight things that I wanted to share with you today. And as I was talking to you, I realized Again, you know, what comes first? Is it just in flow? You know, it, it could be, I kind of, I looked at this as here, here's some of the habits I think that confident people uh, are really focused on. And then as we start talking, I'm thinking, you know, I think it's really also how they became more confident. So it's all part of that process. And, and like I said, I'm not the person I was 20 years ago, and I'm certainly not the person I'm going to be in five or 10 years from now. And that's what I love about personal growth and development is that the journey, right? It's really not about the destination. As much as we want to set our goals and have clear goals in mind for whatever it might be in our business, our personal life, it's not even about the goal. It's about the journey to get to the goal because it's about how you grow and evolve in your thinking, in your habits, in your learnings, right? That make you the person, like it's about who you become in the process of getting to the goal. That's what is so beautiful. So my name is Anna Gibbs. This was your weekly dose of mojo. I trust you got exactly what you needed out of this conversation today. And as always, I'm, I want to know, I want to hear from you. So if you want to put some thoughts on the um, Facebook page, which is um, a private group that if you're not a member of, please join today. It's Monday Morning Mojo with Anna Gibbs. Uh, it's really a great place to hang out. And uh, we all need more positive places to, to be with other positive people. So if you find value in this, please share the Facebook group with your friends, invite them to come on the Zoom with me. I love that we had uh, many of you on Zoom with me today. Thank you so much. And I know we had a lot of you watching through Facebook. So uh, take a moment before you get on to the rest of your day and just reflect on this conversation. Take a moment to say, I'm going to work on this one thing right? Just take one of these eight things that we talked about today and decide how you're going to put that in action more and allow that to create a ripple effect and allow that to create growth for you. Thank you so much. Have an awesome, powerful day, and I'll see you back here next Monday.